And now the readings tonight will be given by Dede from Georgia. I will read from the Bible. Psalms. Come, behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Ecclesiastes, to everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get, and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend, and a time to sow, a time to keep silence, and a time to speak. First Samuel. And the child Samuel ministered unto the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was precious in those days. There was no open vision. And it came to pass at that time, when Eli was laid down in his place, and his eyes began to wax dim, that he could not see. And ere the lamp of God went out in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was, and Samuel was laid down to sleep, that the Lord called Samuel, and he answered, Here am I. And he ran unto Eli and said, Here am I. For thou calledest me. And he said, I called not. Lie down again. And he went and lay down. And the Lord called yet again, Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And he answered, I called not, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, neither was the word of the Lord yet revealed unto him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time. And he arose and went to Eli and said, Here am I, for thou didst call me. And Eli perceived that the Lord had called the child. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go, lie down. And it shall be, if he call thee, that thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood and called as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant heareth. And the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I will do a thing in Israel, at which both the ears of everyone that heareth it shall tingle. In that day, I will perform against Eli all things which I have spoken concerning his house. When I begin, I will also make an end. Then Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. And he answered, Here am I. And he said, What is the thing that the Lord hath said unto thee? I pray thee, hide it not from me. And Samuel told him every wit, and hid nothing from him. And he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seemeth him good. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and did let none of his words fall to the ground. 
Isaiah. For thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall ye be saved. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. I will now read correlative passages from Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures and Prose Works by Mary Baker Eddy. Thoughts unspoken are not unknown to the divine mind. Desire is prayer, and no loss can occur from trusting God with our desires, that they may be molded and exalted before they take form in words and in deeds. To enter into the heart of prayer, the door of the erring senses must be closed. Lips must be mute and materialism silent, that man may have audience with spirit, the divine principle, love, which destroys all error. In order to pray aright, we must enter into the closet and shut the door. We must close the lips and silence the material senses. In the quiet sanctuary of earnest longings, we must deny sin and plead God's allness. We must resolve to take up the cross and go forth with honest hearts to work and watch for wisdom, truth, and love. We must pray without ceasing. Such prayer is answered insofar as we put our desires into practice. The master's injunction is that we pray in secret and let our lives attest our sincerity. Christians rejoice in secret beauty and bounty, hidden from the world, but known to God. Spirit, God, is heard when the senses are silent. What a contrast between our Lord's Last Supper and his last spiritual breakfast with his disciples in the bright morning hours at the joyful meeting on the shore of the Galilean Sea. His gloom had passed into glory, and his disciples' grief into repentance, hearts chastened, and pride rebuked. Convinced of the fruitlessness of their toil in the dark, and wakened by their master's voice, they changed their methods, turned away from material things, and cast their net on the right side. Discerning Christ's truth, anew on the shore of time, they were unable to rise somewhat from mortal sensuousness or the burial of mind in matter into newness of life as spirit. This spiritual meeting with our Lord in the dawn of a new light is the morning meal which Christian scientists commemorate. They bow before Christ's truth to receive more of his reappearing and silently to commune with the divine principle, love. In Christian science, the midnight hour will always be the bridal hour until no night is there. The wise will have their lamps aglow and light will illumine the darkness. Out of the gloom comes the glory of our Lord, and his divine love is found in affliction. When a false sense suffers, the true sense comes out, and the bridegroom appears. We are then wedded to a purer, higher affection and ideal. I pray that all my students shall have their lamps trimmed and burning at the noon of night, that not one of them be found borrowing oil and seeking light from matter instead of spirit, or at work erroneously, thus shutting out spiritual light. Such an error and loss will be quickly learned when the door is shut. Error giveth no light, and it closes the door on itself. In the dark hours, wise Christian scientists stand firmer than ever in their allegiance to God. Wisdom is wedded to their love, and their hearts are not troubled. 
Falsehood is on the wings of the winds, but truth will soar above it. Truth is speaking louder, clearer, and more imperatively than ever. Error is walking to and fro in the earth, trying to be heard above truth, but its voice dies out in the distance. Whosoever proclaims truth loudest becomes the mark for error's shaft. The archers aim at truth's mouthpiece, but a heart loyal to God is patient and strong. Justice waits and is used to waiting and right wins the everlasting victory. The Lord reigneth. Let the earth rejoice. No evidence before the material senses can close my eyes to the scientific proof that God, good, is supreme. Though clouds are round about him, the divine justice and judgment are enthroned. Love is especially near in times of hate, and never so near as when one can be just amid lawlessness and render good for evil. It is the love of God and not the fear of evil that is the incentive in science. I rejoice with those who rejoice and am too apt to weep with those who weep. But over and above it all are sunshine and joy unspeakable. <laughs> 